Welcome to Worship Night at the Cabin. The Ransom of Captain Charlie Spade. You know, the story of Captain Charlie Spade is similar to what happened to Captain Richard Phillips. If you remember that, the ship captain who was taken hostage by the uh, Somalian pirates back in 2009 in the Indian Ocean off the coast north actually the northeast coast of Africa. And Tom Hanks starred in that movie, Captain Phillips, about that event that happened when his ship was taken captive by the pirates. Well, although Captain Charlie Spade is really a fictional character, the story will demonstrate the concept of ransom and redemption. Picture this. A ship called the Estonia Emperor with Captain Charlie Spade at the helm, 930 feet long. A cargo container ship cruising in the dark night off the coast of Somalia, Africa. Things were going fine until they made a foolish mistake in judgment. The captain tried to make better time by taking a shorter route that brought them closer to the Somali coast in a practice that the shipping company didn't condone. Nonetheless, Captain Charlie Spade and the crew, they took their chances and thought they could get away with it. They gambled that in a dark night, while at full speed, they could avoid any possible pirate attack. Sure enough, the worst case scenario unfolded, a small blip showed up on the radar and, and uh, it was closing in fast. Armed pirates were chasing the ship and they were intending to board that ship and, and uh, take it hostage. Well, that's what happened. Uh, they did just that. Captain Charlie Spade, he tried to outrun him at first, but the huge vessel could only go about 29 knots, and that's about 32, 33 miles an hour. Not much match for the pirate speedboat. So they did. The pirates reached the ship in no time, and the crew had been alerted and was ready to try some evasive tactics like turning on high-power water jets and water cannons, which blasted water from the top of the ship toward the, the surface of the sea. But Pirates were able to outmaneuver that. And successfully, they threw a hook and ladder up on the side. They climbed up the side of the ship. And, and uh, they had weapons, unlike the crew of the ship. They had weapons and heavily armed with machine guns, and grenade launchers, and rifles. No match. The crew uh, had no recourse but to surrender to the pirates with their hands up soon as they came on board. They surrendered. The pirates, they ordered Captain Charlie Spade to bring the ship slowly in close to shore, anchor it, and wait for ransom to be paid by the shipping company. So they would release the, the crew and the ship only when that ransom was paid. They were in trouble, not only because they were being held hostage, but, but because uh, they disobeyed the company policy. The shipping, shipping company ended up paying a very large ransom, $7 million. After receiving the payment, the pirates released the ship and the crew and they were set free. And even after discovering this illegal route, the shipping company reconciled the relationship with Captain Charlie Spade and he continued to serve as captain and was determined never to disregard any shipping policy again. Well, the story of Captain Charlie Spade is an illustration of biblical redemption. What is redemption anyway? Well, basically it's the transfer of ownership, gaining possession of something in exchange for payment. If you've ever redeemed a coupon in the store for something 
you know what I mean. Say you receive a coupon in the mail for a free bottle of hand lotion. And when you bring that coupon in the store, you trade it in for the lotion as payment. In other words, you redeem the coupon. You gain ownership of the lotion and the store releases the ownership uh, of that lotion. The idea of a redeemer goes way back into the Old Testament. In the nation of Israel, if someone was forced to sell their land because of poverty and lose ownership of it, a relative could redeem that property or buy it back for their relative. In such a case, though, the one who pays the price is called a redeemer. There are a lot of other cases in the Old Testament of redemption as well. For example, redeeming houses or animals, cattle. You can see how God was laying that foundation of the concept of redemption buying back early on, which would be ultimately fulfilled in Jesus becoming our Redeemer. So let's, let's look closely at the story of Captain Charlie Spade and see how it really is a picture of redemption. To begin with, Charlie's disobedience got him in trouble. Similar to how our sinful nature early in our lives and forward gets us in trouble. Charlie was held hostage. Likewise, we are held hostage by sin which entangles us, shackles us, takes us captive, separates us from God. There's no way Captain Charlie Spade was going to be released by the pirates unless a ransom was paid. The definition of a ransom is this. Money that is paid in order to free someone who has been captured or kidnapped. A ransom is money that is paid to free someone who's been kidnapped, captured. So in a sense, we are captured or kidnapped by sin, become separated from God, and there's no way to be released from sin except by God's own doing. We can't do it on our own. The shipping company paid the high ransom price, which freed Charlie Spade. Likewise, God paid our ransom price, the price to free us from the bondage of sin. It cost God a lot. The payment that freed Charlie Spade uh, redeemed him. To redeem is essentially to buy back, or better yet, to trade for payment, like redeeming a coupon at the department store. The one who pays the ransom is the Redeemer. Yes, the one who pays the ransom price is called the Redeemer. Regarding the ship, Captain Charlie Spade and the crew, well, the shipping company said to the pirates, they're mine. And the company was willing to pay the price. Regarding us, the sinners, <clears throat> God says, you are mine and he's willing to pay the price. God must see every person as extremely, extremely valuable, even when it may seem that we're not deserving and not worthy. That's proven by the astronomical price that God is willing to pay. The price to purchase our freedom, to free us from sin, the cost that God is willing to pay is the life of his one and only son. Reminds me of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Yep, Jesus himself paid that ransom price and therefore is our redeemer. But we must accept God's offer of payment for our sins. 
It's an offer we must accept. That's done through faith and obedience in Christ. Committing our life to him is our Redeemer, our Savior, and our Lord. If we accept the offer, Jesus trades his life for ours. Jesus pays the penalty for our sins, the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate Lamb of God. His death, his blood shed on the cross is the price to free us from sin. The sacrifice of Jesus redeems us, frees us, forgives us, reconciles us to God. His death is substitutionary. He takes on our punishment for sin instead of us paying the punishment for sin. Why did God do it? We're undeserving, we're sinners. Why did Jesus die for us? Well, because of his love for us. The famous John 3.16. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son that everyone who believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. Listen, if we all sin and fall short of the glory of God, which is true of every human, uh, because of his love and his grace, God's payment of the ransom through Jesus is available to anyone. And just as Captain Charlie Spade needed to be rescued and just as his relationship with the shipping company had to be reconciled, we can be rescued and our relationship with God can be reconciled. So the question is, have you accepted God's offer to be redeemed, to be bought back? It doesn't cost you anything. It costs God, it costs God everything. So walk faithfully if you've accepted it. If you haven't, what are you waiting for? The gift is yours. The gift to pay your ransom. One, one more thing. Jesus is our redeemer. Paying the pen, penalty for our sin by dying on the cross. However, there's more to the story. Jesus not only died on the cross, but he rose from the dead. And because he resurrected from the dead, there's more to the story for us who are believers you see, Christianity is all about new life, resurrected life in this world, in this life as we live it, as Christ followers, and the life to come after we die. Resurrected to live forever in paradise with the Lord. Eternal life, what a gift. We, Easter's coming up, and uh, what a time to remember. We have a Redeemer that paid the ransom price uh, to forgive us of our sins, free us from sin and the penalty of sin and we have to remember especially on Easter that he rose from the dead so we resurrect as well I'm going to close out with 1 Peter chapter 1 18 to 23 for you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors and it was not paid with gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began, but now in these last days, he has been revealed for your sake. Through Christ, you have come to trust in God. And you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. You were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth, and so now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. Wow, what a passage. Well, I think it's time for some 
music, song. And I, I was looking through the old book that I uncovered, an old notebook from 1987. And there's some old songs that some I forgot and I found an old tape and was able to kind of redoing some of these songs and here's the original lyrics I wrote down in 1987 called Kick Out the Devil. <laughs> it's just it's just a fun sing-along song. I'm going to play it. Uh, the words go, Kick Out the Devil, Bring in the Lord, Unlock the Bolt, Open the Door. This kind of thinking is worth fighting for. Kick Out the Devil, Bring in the Lord. Like this. Kick out the devil. Bring in the Lord. Unlock the boat. Open the door. This kind of thinking is worth fighting for. Kick out the devil and bring in the Lord. Kick out the devil, bring in the Lord, unlock the bolt, open the door. This kind of thinking is worth fighting for. Kick out the devil, bring in the Lord. Teacher said Sunday in Sunday school, always remember, keep the golden rule. Every day, read from the book that'll keep the devil really shook. Kick out the devil, bring in the Lord, unlock the bolt, open the door. This kind of thinking is worth fighting for. Kick out the devil, bring in the Lord. Remember to keep the faith That's the only way to save the human race Always remember, practice what is preached And to the devil, you'll be hard to reach <laughs> Kick out the devil, bring in the Lord Unlock the bolt, open the door this kind of thinking is worth fighting for. Kick out the devil, bring in the Lord. Kick out the devil, bring in the Lord. Unlock the bolt, open the door. This kind of thinking is worth fighting for. Kick out the devil, bring in the Lord. Kick out the devil, bring in the Lord. Kick out the devil, bring in the Lord. <laughs> I uncovered that song and I thought, whoa, what a fun, that'd be one around the campfire, you know. Well, uh, Easter coming up, just reflect on the idea that uh, we have a redeemer, someone that paid the ransom price, died on the cross, but rose again to defeat death and uh, because he defeated death, we defeat death itself. Wow. Let's close out in a prayer. Father, thank you uh, for your plan to rescue us and save us. Jesus coming to earth, being our redeemer to pay the penalty that we deserve and traded his life in a sense for ours, uh, taken our punishment on his shoulders and giving us life eternal. So all we can do is praise you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. So until next time, Arrivederci. And kick out the devil. the devil